the Malbec disease is a current disease that is trending in health. And when you go for your nursing interviews, you may be asked questions on current affairs. So it's good to know what is trending, especially in the health system, because you are going for a health training interview. And so in today's video, I want to talk about the Malbec disease. And some of you also requested it after my last video on current affairs. So if you're interested, grab a paper, a pen or a notebook and let's get right into it. <music> So we'll look at what it is, the mode of spread, the signs and symptoms, and most importantly, the preventive measures that you can put in place. So if you are asked, you know what to say about it. The Marburg disease is a disease caused by the Marburg virus. It's rare, but it's a severe form of hemorrhagic fever. When you say hemorrhagic fever, it's fever associated with bleeding from the orifices like Ebola and the like. So that is all what the Marburg disease is and it's a virus it's caused by a virus so what is all the fuss about in 2022 which is this year ghana recorded two cases of the malbec virus disease in the ashanti region so it's not a worldwide outbreak it's just in ghana for this year last year one case was recorded in guinea but that was all there was to it but this year two cases were recorded and after the time i'm recording this video three cases were recorded and out of which two people had expired the first two cases that were detected had expired that means they died okay the first case was recorded on june 26 2022 and the second case came on june 28 and these two people reported to the same facility so that is what happened in ghana and then they started contact tracing to trace people that came in contact with them because one of the bodies was transferred all the way to the northern region for burial so contact tracing was done so they had died and were buried before their test results came on 1st July, confirming that it was a Malbec virus disease. The mode of transmission from animals, because the disease is primarily in animals, that's the bats and monkeys. So the transfer from animals to human beings is unclear, but it's a contact disease, meaning you have to come in contact with the body fluid. So it's either these two people came in contact with a sick animal or a dead animal and had contact with the body fluid, either blood, or mucosal fluid that is how they might have contracted the disease when it comes to human to human transmission the virus spreads through contact so if you have a broken skin there is a cut on your skin and you come in contact with somebody who is infected and their body fluid touched you that skin it can get access into the body almost like hiv you know when you have a cut and there's blood then you can get infected or through um, mucosal membrane so anywhere uh, that is wet in your body you can have so your eyes your nose your mouth your private parts you can get transmissions through that so one is by body fluids blood saliva sweat uh, feces anything that comes out of you breast milk semen in men so semen in ghana we say sperm but it's semen so semen and amniotic fluid that is the fluid that the baby lies in in the womb it's called amniotic fluid and those are the fluids that can transmit the disease so if somebody has a disease and you come in contact with any of this fluid from that person you can get infected uh, either the person is still alive or died and you came in contact with it and you didn't manage it well you can get the disease and also contaminated things that the sick person or the person who died used so something like bed sheets clothing what the person wore um, medical equipment that might have been used and not well sterilized they can transmit this infection and also for men who have already recovered so a man who might have gotten the Marburg disease and recovered can have some of the virus in their semen so if that man has unprotected sex with somebody else either oral sex vagina sex inner sex you can still transmit the disease so what are some of the signs and symptoms for the first few days is fever chills I want to, like you're feeling cold there's headache and hiccups <laughs> that's hiccup and also myalgia like bodily pains your muscles and joints will be paining you those are the preliminary symptoms and these symptoms are what you experience when you get malaria so the person might first suspect malaria because it feels like malaria but moving forward after maybe the fifth day you may develop a rash on the chest and the, your back and maybe on your stomach there's nausea and vomiting you feel like vomiting everything you may have, the person might experience chest pains sore throat and all of that and so when the sore throat sets in you see that it's difficult for the person to drink water and the like so then there is a need to 
So that may lead to dehydration because you are not taking in enough water. So from there, then you might start bleeding from all of your orifices. So the flyers are posted on the community page. You see that there's bleeding from the eyes, the nose, like anywhere you have opening, your ears, your nose, your eyes, your mouth, your anus, your vajayjay, your pee, pee You can bleed from all of these places. Hemorrhage is a medical term for bleeding. So hemorrhagic fever, bleeding, fever with bleeding, okay? Uh, so you start, the person will start bleeding. And those are the ones that you who is outside can see and know that, oh, this person is having this. What are some of the ways of prevention? Since it's a contact disease or disease that you contract when you come in contact with somebody. One, for now, you should avoid touching animals that are dead or sick because you don't know what is causing their sickness or what made them die. Any possible, don't chew some bush meat, okay? No bush meat because you don't know whether it was shot, whether the animal had some disease before it was shot or it died and the hunter went to find it somewhere and brought it home. So no bush meat, just to be safe. And when it comes to the human to human spread, hand washing, you have to wash your hands, avoid touching your face, wash your hands, frequently use your hand sanitizers. And when you're going for your interview, go with your nose mask because you don't know what you, who you might encounter on the way. The nose mask is there to protect you, okay? So use your face mask and the light. And if you come in contact with anybody's body fluid, wash your hands immediately. And if you, that doesn't mean if you see somebody bleeding, you shouldn't help. You can help, but protect yourself before helping that person out, okay? It's only Ghana that has recorded the cases of Mavic for now in the world. So the focus is only on Ghana. And for my checks this morning, we recorded three confirmed cases and two had died. And I even saw somewhere that after 41 days, they can, if there's no more confirmed cases, they will declare the country as Mavic free. So we are hoping for that. I've posted the flyers on the community post. So just look at them. Uh, you can take a screenshot. I don't know if you can, I'm not sure you can download it from YouTube, but you can take a screenshot of it and you have it in picture form and then just go through it so that you know things about it. I only use the, what it is, mode of spread, prevention, signs and symptoms, because those are the ones that you can easily remember. And if you ask any question on it, you'll be able to answer to. So if you want to know the shape and the form that current affairs questions will take in your nursing interview, I have a video here just for you watch it and get prepared. I wish you all the best in your nursing interview. My name is Elase. I'm a registered nurse here in Ghana and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.